Guys, we are only a few weeks away from the kickoff of the inaugural season of this version of the USFL. And what that means is it's time to start previewing these teams. Guys, this is one of the series I've been looking forward to the most, and I can't wait to get into this. Over the next two weeks, I will be previewing all eight USFL teams. So if you are interested in USFL content, make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a like on the video. It really helps it do better in the algorithm. Now, let's get into this. The Michigan Panthers will be led by probably the most well-known coach in this league, Jeff Fisher. Fisher played college football at USC and played professionally for the Chicago Bears. He started helping Buddy Ryan coach while dealing with injuries while with the Bears and got his coaching started as a defensive back coach for Buddy when he took over the job at Philadelphia. He has coached with the Los Angeles Rams, San Francisco 49ers, and Houston Oilers, and first became a head coach for the Tennessee Titans, holding that job from 1995 to 2010 after they moved from Houston to Nashville. He served as St. Louis's head coach from 2012 to 2016, and has compiled a 173, 165, and 1 regular season record, and a 5 and 6 mark in the postseason. In the 1999 season, Tennessee lost to the St. Louis Rams 23-16 in Super Bowl XXX IV. Serving as Jeff Fisher's offense coordinator is Eric Marty, who played college football at Chapman College, played professionally in the Austrian and Italian football leagues, and won multiple championships in those leagues. He started his coaching career at Oklahoma Panhandle State and has since spent time with Moore Park, East Los Angeles College, Reedley College, and Grambling State. His defensive coordinator will be Daniel Carroll. Now, I'm going to be completely honest, there wasn't a ton of information on Carroll, so I could be talking about the completely wrong guy, so I apologize and leave that disclaimer right here. Carroll attended West Liberty, where he played linebacker. He has spent time with West Liberty, Ohio State, and Kentucky as a grad assistant, as well as Houston, New Mexico, and UMass as positional coaches. Now, it's time to move over to the players who will be playing on the field and... The best place to start is at quarterback with the first overall pick, who is Shea Patterson. Patterson is a former five-star recruit who played collegiately at Ole Miss, but later transferred to Michigan throwing for 5,661 yards, 45 touchdowns, and 15 interceptions, while adding seven touchdowns on the ground while with the Wolverines. He was drafted by the Texas Rangers in the MLB draft as well. He went undrafted during the 2020 NFL Draft and signed with the Kansas City Chiefs and has also spent time with the BC Lions and Montreal Alouettes of the CFL. Paxton Lynch will be competing with Shea Patterson for the starting quarterback job. Lynch is the biggest named quarterback in the draft and was the last quarterback taken in the draft. He's a former three-star recruit coming out of high school, choosing Memphis and finished second all-time in career attempts, completions, completion percentage, passing yards and passing touchdowns in Memphis football history. He finished his collegiate career with 8,863 yards, 59 touchdowns, and 23 interceptions, while also rushing for 687 yards and 17 touchdowns on the ground. He decided to forego his senior year and was drafted 26th overall by the Denver Broncos during the 2016 NFL Draft. He spent two seasons with Denver before being released in 2018. He has since spent time with the Seahawks, Steelers, and Saskatchewan Rough Riders of the CFL. When it comes to the running back position, Stevie Scott II finished his Indiana career as a top five rusher in school history, went undrafted during the 2021 NFL Draft, and has spent time with the Saints and Broncos. Reggie Corbin struggled to catch on in the CFL and played college football at Illinois. At wide receivers, Quincy Araballejo played for Ole Miss in college and spent time with the Baltimore Ravens. Lance Lenore started at Western Illinois, breaking multiple school records and spent time with the Dallas Cowboys, while Jeff Bidette started his collegiate career at Kentucky before transferring to Oklahoma for his last year of eligibility. Bidette ran a 4-2-7-40 at his pro day, but still went undrafted before signing with the Minnesota Vikings of the NFL. He has since spent time with the Dallas Renegades of the XFL, Washington football team, Atlanta Falcons, and Las Vegas Raiders. Ray Bolden starred at Stony Brook, finishing second all-time in receptions with 171 and fourth all-time with 2,081 yards receiving. He has spent time in the XFL and now joins the USFL. At tight end, Joseph Magnifico played at Memphis and went undrafted during the 2020 NFL Draft. LaMichael Pettyway is a former Iowa State receiver and has spent time with the Texans and has worked out for the Colts, Seahawks, as well as the Packers. On the offensive lineman, Yes, my favorite guys to talk about as a former offensive lineman myself. They have Telton Salters and Josh Dunlap are the big names on the offensive line. 
both spent time on NFL practice squads, but the rest of the line does not really have the same experience. Keith Williams was the first tackle taken by the Panthers and played at Colorado State in college and went undrafted during the 2021 NFL Draft. Joshua Taylor is eligible for the 2022 NFL Draft, which leaves the question whether the Mississippi Valley State product is here to stay. Sean Richard Pollard blocked for both Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence at Clemson. The center went undrafted during the 2020 NFL Draft and signed with the Baltimore Ravens before being released and returned home to become a football coach in 2021. Markel Harrell has spent time with three NFL teams over the past two seasons, coming out of Auburn and went undrafted during the 2020 NFL Draft and spent time with the Bills twice, Raiders and Panthers. Dyshawn Dixon played guard at San Diego State and has spent time with the Baltimore Ravens. Now it's time to move over to the defensive side of the ball and the best place to start with that is the defensive line. Defensive end Ottawa Adejo was, was taken five picks after his brother. Adejo played at Utah State and went undrafted during the 2019 NFL Draft. He has spring league experience playing for the Lyman in 2021. Kayvon Walker led the XFL in sacks before the league season was canceled. He played collegiately at Maryland going undrafted and has spent time with the Bears, Chiefs, Guardians of the XFL and Steelers and took the 2021 season off from football. Chase Damore played college football at Central Washington and led Division II in blocked kicks during the 2018 season. He has spent time with the linemen of the Spring League, helping them win the championship while also spending time with the IFL and CFL. He is maybe most known for his time on Too Hot to Handle as a reality TV star. Moving on to the defensive tackle position, TJ Carter was the first defensive tackle taken by the Michigan Panthers and played at Kentucky. He went undrafted during the 2020 NFL Draft and signed with the Arizona Cardinals. He has also spent time with the Saints and Steelers. Juan Bailey put together an impressive career at Iowa State, earning all Big 12 honors in 2018 and 2020 and an AP 13 All-American. He went undrafted during the 2021 NFL Draft and signed with the Philadelphia Eagles but was later released. Moving over to the linebacker position, let's take a look at the inside linebackers. Justin Hughes suffered a season-ending injury in 2019, was granted a medical redshirt allowing him to return to Kansas State during the 2020 season. Coming out of college, he did not garner much attention and went undrafted during the 2021 NFL Draft. This will be his first shot to play professional football. Taiwan Jones played college football at Michigan State and coming out of college, he was regarded highly by NFL scouts, being projected to be a fifth round pick. He would go undrafted during the 2015 NFL Draft and signed with the New York Jets appearing in three games. He took three years off from football and has spent time with the Memphis Express of the AAF and Los Angeles Wildcats of the XFL. When it comes to the outside linebackers, Terry Myrick was the first linebacker taken by the Michigan Panthers and played collegiately at Eastern Michigan. He was a three-year starter for the Eagles and is actually eligible for the 2022 NFL Draft. He could easily become a fan favorite as a home state product. Frank Ginda played at San Jose State leading the NCAA in tackles during his junior year with 173 the most in Mountain West Conference history. He entered the 2018 NFL Draft for going his senior season and went undrafted signing with the Arizona Cardinals. He has since spent time with the Miami Dolphins, San Diego Fleet of the AAF, New Orleans Saints, and New York Guardians of the XFL. Trey Threat started his college career at Auburn before later transferring to Jacksonville State. He originally played tight end and used the Hub Football Showcase to earn an opportunity in the USFL as an outside linebacker. When it comes to the corners, Tino Ellis was the first cornerback taken by the Panthers and played collegiately at Maryland and spent time with the New Orleans Saints and Miami Dolphins practice squads the past two years. He has great height standing at 6'2". James Houston played at Baylor and played three games for the Philadelphia Eagles during the 2020 season. He has spent time with the Browns, Panthers, and Jaguars as well. Coming out of Tarleton State is Dominique Martin who was originally a wide receiver. During his senior year, he had five interceptions and went undrafted during the 2017 NFL Draft. He played in Germany during the 2018 season and played for the Conquerors of the Spring League in 2021. He most recently tried out for the New England Patriots. Jalen Burrell played at New Mexico and went undrafted coming out of college and has since spent time in the Argonauts of the CFL and a short time with the Kansas City Chiefs. At safety, Oren Stewart was the first safety taken by the Panthers. He played collegiately at Baylor and has spent time with five NFL teams as well as the San Diego Commanders of the AAF. This is most likely his last shot to make it back to the NFL. Coming out of Nebraska is Karrion Williams, who fell off his senior year of college. He missed out on the AAF and XFL, but garnered interest from CFL teams. Now, a lot of people aren't probably going to talk about these position groups, but as a former long snapper myself, 
Specialists are people too. So I thought let's close this video out talking about the special teams players. Punter Michael Carrizoza played college football at San Jose State, finishing as a three-time all-conference selection and one undrafted coming out of high school. He was one of three punters drafted during the inaugural draft. At the time of recording, the Michigan Panthers do not have a kicker, and then my favorite position, the long snapper. Shane Griffins played at Westchester and was the last player taken by the Panthers during the supplemental draft. And there you have it, the preview of the 2022 USFL Michigan Panthers. If you enjoyed this video, maybe check out my video previewing the three running backs I'm most excited for going into this season of the USFL. If you enjoyed this video and want more USFL content, make sure to hit the subscribe button and leave a like on the video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.